Hello world of YouTube! Welcome to another episode of Viral's Movie Reviews, where I review movies that you guys suggest, I go to the movies and see, or I feel like discussing. This time around, I'm going to discuss a film, I'm going to review a film that I went to the midnight release for, and that is The Dark Knight Rises. And I'm going to be honest when I say, this is my most anticipated film of the year. Uh, I've been looking forward to this film more than The Avengers, more than the new Spider-Man, more than really anything else I can think of that's, that's been announced or has, even more than The Hobbit. And I fucking love Lord of the Rings. I, 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 I'm, I'm a huge rings nerd. I don't know where my other films are, but I got them all. But there's, there's King. But I fucking, I love Lord of the Rings. I, I love Lord of the Rings. But I love Batman more. But I've, I've been a Batman fan for much longer, so. But, um, yeah, this film. And I, as I mentioned in my video that I made the night that I came home from the review, this is not, repeat, not going to be spoiler-free. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. If you don't want to watch this, but you still want to watch my face, because you've never seen me before, wall of videos on the screen right now. Tons of places you could go that have me or feature me or all that stuff. Go to one of those, because in this, I'm going to be not just talking about this film as a film, like as a single film, but as a finish to a trilogy, as a finish to a whole story. I'm going to be telling it. I'm going to be mentioning key plot points that tie this film to the other films well or not so well and that do a good job of really conveying the themes of kind of the films and all, all that fun stuff. I really put a lot of thought into this review, which not to say that I don't from my other reviews, but I don't know. I, I, because I, I guess it's because I was so anticipating this film. I was so looking forward to this film. I really paid a lot of critical attention to it when I was watching it. And the film itself... Like, as a film, just as a film with a script, with a cast, with a crew that is trying to tell a story, it does an alright job of that. It does a pretty good job of it. It has this really good theme, both as a film that's trying to be realistic and just with some dark overtones. It has a really good optimistic message of this rise, this rise with this chant that's playing at random points throughout the movie. Um, which is backed by Fantastic Girl. It's one compliment I cannot give this film enough. Is The score is fantastic. Hans Zimmer really did a great job with the score, but I'll talk about that in a minute. But it, it does a good job of tying this theme together, of this theme of rising above. And while it first starts off as Bane's theme, it's this kind of, you know, the rise of evil, the rise of this darkness, it also proves as the rise of Bruce Wayne, the rise of Gotham in their darkest of times, uh, at least that they've had in a long time. And I think that it does a really good job of that while they kind of breeze past some points like Bruce is kind of in the jail, then he's just out of the jail. And, you know, they kind of breeze past this huge span of time to where the bomb is about to blow up. I mean, they do breeze past a lot of stuff. They still have this theme of rise that does reoccur throughout the film and does provide a good theme throughout the film. And what good is the film, really, without some good actors, some good characterization? And this film is packed with it. I don't want to say packed with it, but it has some really good characterization, especially from the newcomers in this film. I'm talking uh, Tom Hardy as Bane and Catwoman, who, uh, before the review, I had the name down pat, but yeah, um, those two, ah, did not disappoint. I, I was, I had faith in both of them, especially Anne Hathaway. Name stuck to me. Anne Hathaway did a fantastic job. I was defending her before this film. Like, I had no one I knew, no one I talked to, and any of the people I talked to had hopes in her. They were like, I don't know. I really don't know. I'm not, I don't know if she'll provide a good Catwoman. And I just, I, oh, every time, doing the same thing. Like, you haven't seen her darker roles, have you? You haven't seen her play more serious roles. Because I've seen films like Havoc, where I know she can play the darker roles, and she does it really well and she blew this performance out of the water the minute she clicked in emotion like the minute she went from either serious to 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 a lie like from from dark and sinister to innocent or from vice versa she, the minute she clicked onto one of those like to the opposites i was sold i was just yes that is catwoman she just fucking sold me in that alone like, I was, oh, I was so stoked. You know what? Even from a physical standpoint, she rocked that leather suit. She looks sexy as shit. Enough about that. From going from Catwoman to Bane. Holy shit. I, I, 
I was hoping they were going to do this, and I'm glad they did. They focused more on Bane's intelligence. And that's one thing I don't think a lot of people going into this film knew about Bane, is that he was actually smart. He's not just this venom-fueled tank of a brute. He's not just some, some brutish, uh, very unintelligent guy. He actually is smart. And he actually has worked with Batman, too. Like, they, they, they have this, this hate relationship. They have, like, he did break his back and stuff, but they have worked together, and he is a smart guy. He does, he is very witty, and he's very good at devising stuff, so I, I'm glad that they did that in this film, and they did it well. Like, his plan was extremely thought out, and while there, there, do are, there are some plot holes within his plot, it, I, I think it's fine enough to where you kind of glaze over some of that and just go, okay, this is a well-devised plan. Like, he found his way underneath Wayne Enterprises. I mean, now that you, when you find out the twist, which I'll get to in a second, which was really good, but when you get to that point and it just, you, wow, that just, that he did such a great job of making this plan pan out beautifully. And I think, honestly, after thinking about it, I honestly think Bane knew he was going to lose. I think Bane knew he was going to lose and he was merely just teaching Gotham a lesson because if you think about it, he wouldn't put Bruce Wayne in a prison he knew he couldn't get out of. I mean, yeah, he broke his back, which, again, that's another thing we'll get to in a minute, but Bane, Bane is smarter than that. I think he knew that he was going to lose. I think he knew that, that things were not going to go his way. He knew that Bruce Wayne would find a way out of that jail and find his way back to Gotham and take him down because... If he knew who he was just going into Gotham, if he knew Bruce Wayne was Batman, if he knew all this stuff, if he knew Gotham as well as he did, he would know something like that. So I honestly think he was merely trying to do some sort of social experiment. He was trying to make it, he was trying to send a message to the world. You know, that's honestly what I think he was trying to do. And I think he did a good job. I think Bane, that plot point, Bane, awesome. Fantastic. As for the other thousands of plot points and the other characters, the, the twist, which I will spoil right now. Again, if you have not clicked away for some reason, you do not know anything about Dark, Dark, Dark Knight Rises, go somewhere else, sidebar, anywhere. Spoiler, right now. The fact that that chick was actually the bad guy was a good twist, at least to me. I think the minute she shanked Batman, I was like, oh! I even, like, my face, I had shocked, I was like, whoa, what?! did not see that coming you know and then after showing the flashbacks again from the kid you would like oh yeah that's a girl kid why didn't i piece that together earlier stupid me but i think that was a good twist i think that was a good throw in there while she's not a famous villain while she's not you know someone noteworthy of batman's epic stature of villain villains and all these other characters i think that was a good twist to throw into the film and that was a good plot point that tied it together with the other films, at least the first film. Because the one film that kind of distances himself from is The Dark Knight. They really do, they really just kind of expand on Batman Begins because it is the same League of Shadows guys coming to do their plan from the first film just on a grander scale. Um, and they don't really mention even the Joker. They mention, you know, Two-Face and the fact that they have the Dent Law and they kind of mention the fact that they still praise Harvey Dent as a hero, but... Uh, they didn't mention the Joker, which is kind of a shame, but I mean, you understand why, because Heath Ledger's not able to reprise his role in any way, shape, or form. But that aside, I think that was a good plot point to tie the other films together. You had um, Liam Neeson coming back to reprise his role as Ra's al Ghul, and he did a good job of, of even showing up to Bruce in a form of an illusion. It was a great job of tying the some of the themes of the film together, of rising above, because that was kind of part of the theme of the first film, to kind of get over your fears, to build up, um, to get past something that's in your life that's very, you know, in your way. This is a great job of, of getting, of tying that together on a bigger scale. The other, and the other really big plot point that really drove itself home to me was uh, the underlying story with Alfred. I mean, that was how it ended. It ended with Alfred's happy ending, which I wasn't for. I still, like, I don't think that was a good ending to the film. The ha Hollywood happy ending where, you know, Br Batman dies, but Bruce Wayne lives. Like, I don't like that, honestly, because I, I honestly would have liked to have seen the symbol in the man die. But I think that Michael Caine did a great job of conveying his emotions to Bruce. He did a good job of saying, hey, 
quit your job. I don't want to see you get hurt. I care about you, Bruce. You know, he's telling him this truth, which backfired in his ass from the second film. His actions from the second film, that was really the only thing they brought was the fact that he burned the letter from Rachel um, and that how that would affect Bruce. But I think that I think that on Bruce's part, that's fucked up that he wouldn't trust Alfred, the man that raised him. But I can't really completely judge Bruce's judge a character because he's fucking Bruce Wayne. But I think that I think that he should have had more faith in Alfred and should have just let Alfred leave. And I think that would have been a good uh, one part of the plot that really just kind of threw me off. Like, why is he doing this? Why is he siding with a woman that's dead? That while he did grow up with Alfred, fucking raised him. But again, that, that's a small nitpick I had with at least Alfred's plot point. Aside from the big ending where. While he dies, and Michael Caine really delivers this sad performance, this performance of showing how sad he is, I hate that the ending is the way it is, because I originally thought this film was going to end with the breaking of Batman's back. I had been preaching that message to people for the longest time. Ever since I found out Bane was the villain in this film, I was preaching that that's how this is going to end. That's how they're going to end this trilogy. And I would have been fine with that. The more I thought about it, the more I thought that that would have been a good ending. You would have had the breaking of Batman, the breaking of the symbol that Gotham at least holded so highly before, you know, the whole framing for murder thing. You would have seen the death of this icon, this, this, this character, this caricature that helped save their city. You know, it would have been a great, a great end to that trilogy, a breaking of the man, a breaking of the symbol. And in a sense, he does still break Bruce Wayne because he almost kills Bane in the final act, like in the final, uh, the final big action scene. He almost kills Bane. So he, in a sense, he, he even says, I broke you. Like he, he, he did break Bruce Wayne, but it, it's not the type of breaking I was thinking of. But that aside... If they would have killed him, that still would have been a great ending. It would have been a dark ending, but it would have been an ending that suited it more because it's just having an end all happy and with a new Batman, it makes sense again with the rise because he rised above. He, does, he doesn't want to do this Batman thing anymore. It's still just kind of, yeah, it's finagly with me. I don't like the fact that they threw Robin in there. That, ah, oh, like there's a point in the film when Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character was at Bruce Wayne's house when he had the conversation with Bruce about how his parents died and how he feels the same way he did. I had that thought in the back of my mind from that point on. Are they really doing this? Are they throwing a Robin in here? Are they... And so part of me was waiting throughout the film for them to throw just another suit in there and to have a Robin suit. And I would have... I would have... Uh, Robin does not belong in these films. He does not. He does not fit the motif of these films. He does not fit the, 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 the style of these films. He does not fit the tone of these films. Robin, at least to me, Robin, the general characterization of Robin. While this characterization of Robin works, he's a very he's a lot more independent than Robin is. And again, I, this is coming from a guy who who loves Batman but hasn't really read too much of the Robin solo arcs. I know Nightwing is a solo hero and he does a good job with that. And you know the whole battle for the cow arc, he does a really good job of, of really finding himself, but Robin as a character does not fit these films. Just, just at least to me, period. He does not. These films were a lot about Bruce Wayne and not about ba and not about Batman with a sidekick. It's about Bruce Wayne and his dealing with him as Batman. So that character didn't need to be in these films at, to me at all. And the fact that they threw him in just seems kind of gimmicky to me. Just, just that's just me, I guess. I mean, they, I get that it's Robin, and I guess they're trying to find a name that's identifiable. But I did not agree with that choice as a person. While this characterization of Robin works. It works, the fact that he is how he is. I just don't like the fact that it is Robin. But that's just me, I guess. But that aside, that aside, those those small points aside, again, as a film, it does a good job of, of telling a story, telling a theme. And it, it I understand that there are time constraints. That's why I, I, I deal with plot holes in films. I'm fine, as long as they aren't too extravagant. I didn't mind the plot holes in this film, how Bruce got back to Gotham or anything like that. Small things like that, and some some may see them as big things. Small things like that, I didn't see as a problem with this film. That they didn't stand out to me as wow, this is really bad. I just mostly have problems with the ending. The ending of the film, I didn't like, and that's purely from a personal standpoint. As a film ending, it works. As an ending to this trilogy, it works because it, it does a good job of re resolving everything, just about everything, except for the whole, hey, we have a new Batman thing, but that still even kind of leaves it to its own resolution. So, all in all, I kind of have mixed feelings about this film. I do recommend you see it. 
partially because I'm a huge Batman fan. I just loved this. I loved the two films, and this film was not bad. I did not leave the theater disappointed, but I didn't clap at the end like everyone else. I just kind of sat there thinking because I, I kind of I had some problems with the film, but I I still recommend it partially because you gotta film you gotta finish this trilogy. You gotta finish it, and if you've seen it and you have seen this review, then I hope you agree with me that this film has its flaws, but it's still not terrible. The mood is great. The score is fantastic. Hans Zimmer, I, I, he's not my favorite composer. I, I'm not the biggest fan of Hans Zimmer. Um, I, I like the stuff he did with the Dark Knight trilogy, and um, the really the biggest piece of his, the bis, biggest film of his that I didn't like his score of was Inception, and that's partially because it was very Dark Knight-ish, and I just didn't like it. But aside from that, he's not a terrible composer. He does do a good job of building a, a, a epic feel, and painting this picture with sound. I think he does a great job with that. And he has a good... He has good mood-setting pieces. So, yeah. As a score, it does really work with this film. But, um, yeah. Those are my thoughts on it. Overall, I liked it as a film. I wasn't big on it as a Batman film. Mostly the ending. Um, but hopefully, if you've seen the film, you did enjoy it. Hopefully you enjoyed my review of it, my analytical take on this film. Um, as always, leave suggestions for movies. Uh, next film I'm going to be doing is A Clockwork Orange, because it was suggested by one of you guys. Um, I have been Viral Rack. You guys have good days, lives, and situations. And I will see you another day. Time for me to edit this lovely piece of video. That's 16 minutes long. Jesus.